device. So this is a Raman spectrometer and it is used to do a Raman spectroscopy in order to characterize the different materials. So it is based on basically interaction between a matter and energy. Mm -hmm. So as we all know, the light is a form of energy and it has got a particle and wave-like nature. So if you consider a particle nature of light, so for example, if incident photons hits on a any, any kind of material, so most of the these photons get scattered and this scattering can be two types, uh, of two types. One is uh, Rayleigh scattering and another is uh, Raman scattering. So in Rayleigh scattering, the most of the energy is conserved uh, and in Raman scattering, some of the energy is consumed by these materials. And that is the key feature for Raman spectroscopy because there is a difference between the incident energy and uh, scattered energy of light. So this can be, so why, why this happens? Because uh, any kind of material has a different uh, molecules and they vibrate at different frequencies. So when this incident light, photons of light has a certain frequency, certain energy which is comparable to the energy of those uh, frequencies, uh, energy required for vibration of those bonds, uh, some of the energy is absorbed and the uh, scattered light has a lower energy which can be detected and from that we, we know that there, there are different bonds and we, we can get idea about the composition of any kind of material. So that is the key feature which can be used to characterize different kind of materials. So, like I mentioned earlier, the Raman spectroscopy has, uh, has to do with uh, different kind of uh, vibrations of different kind of molecules in a, in a material. So, for example, if we have these two similar looking samples, so I know for sure, I mean, they, even if they look similar, they have some difference between these two and that is based on different chemical composition of these two materials. So, if I use Raman spectroscopy for detecting these differences, I will definitely see some difference based on uh, different vibrations of a chemical uh, chemical content of these two uh, these two samples. So, depending on the difference between these uh, vibrations of different bonds in these corresponding to different chemicals in these two samples, you, you will get a different Raman spectra, and from that you can uh, clearly point out which one is a standard one or which one is a fake sample. So, the Raman spectroscopy generates a characteristic fingerprint for every material, which gives them a unique identity. So, so far you have heard like how, what the Raman actually does and how it works. So now what I'm going to show you how we actually use the Raman spectroscopy. So this is the Raman spectrometer. It has got two units. This is what the, all the, this is what the, this is what the lights get generated. And this, as you can see, is the microscope. So what you basically do, first you take your sample of interest. Here I've got some nail polish on glass slides, simple glass slides. Rub your sample in, place it under the microscope. As you know, microscope can magnify images and help you focus on a particular spot. So what you do after placing the sample, focus with the microscope, as you can see, the microscope object you it's somewhat there. Then close this drawer. Turn on your laser, and now I'm going to tell you what happens to the laser. So the laser comes through this path, and there are several mirrors in here which reflects the laser and moves the laser through this path and to the sample. After hitting the sample, the laser goes back to the same way path and goes to the detector. For a while, you're going to see how the Raman signal is used to detect the molecules. So after placing the sample and when the Raman laser scans it, this is what you see. So you're going to see as the Raman scans, you're going to see some peaks on the screen and those peaks are the fingerprints of the molecule. You see the Raman is scanning. You see this peak? That's the signature of a particular molecule. This is fingerprint. So like this in a sample, if your sample has a lot of different molecules, it's going to give you some different things. Like over here, you can see another thing.
so after end of a complete scan, uh, the, the, this is what you're supposed to see. As you can see, there are multiple peaks here. So multiple peaks means multiple fingerprints for different components in a sample. So that's how the Raman works. And by knowing about this peak, you can really tell what chemical compounds are present over there. So, how do you apply RAM? RAM spectroscopy in real life. Chemists in the lab usually make new molecules and write, and when they make new molecules, they want to know what those molecules are. That's how they use RAM spectroscopy. In the medicine, people in pharmacy, they make new drugs. And when they make new drugs, they want to see the fingerprints of molecules inside the drug. And then, a more interesting application is forensic samples. Blood samples, paints, nail polish legs, they can all be scanned under spectroscopy and detect molecules and also find hardware.